So, first off, you can't save yourself. We know that. Yes. Well, most of us do. <laughs> Everything isn't. It is not by any righteous thing. It's not by any works that we've done that salvation is, is made mani been made available or manifest to us. But it's because of what he has done. Who did it? Jesus, true. Mm -hmm. But who sent him? Oh, God the Father. Amen. Sends Jesus the Son. Amen. And Jesus is, and listen, Jesus is God in, incarnate. And, and what we see, and if you can imagine this, if you, if you would, if you would walk with me for a moment and just imagine this is God reaching his hand into the world, massaging it around uh, like he did at creation when he created Adam and he created everything else. But he, he reached into Adam once again with his hands. Breathe breath of life into him. Yes. Then he reached into Adam again, ripped out a rib. <laughs> I'm sure Adam was a glad, glad he was asleep at that moment. Oh, yeah. But the reason he did that is because it wasn't good that he would be alone. Mm -hmm. It's not good that he should be alone. And so God, in his infinite wisdom, creates a woman. A woman who would be his companion. A woman who would come alongside of him. Now notice, it's not a woman that would replace him. Neither does he replace her. But they listen, they would complete one another. Likewise, not as if God needed anything to complete him. But he had a desire to have fellowship with those like him. So God created the heavens and the earth. And then he... Pause. He said, that's pretty good. As a matter of fact, that's real good. But then he creates Adam and Eve. And he says, now that's real good right there. Now watch what he's done. Throughout all of the scripture, throughout all of time, he's prepared a place for us. Jesus came and he says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Now let me tell you, you will not be going there unless you are prepared for there. Oh, I, I don't want to get off on this one, but sometimes we, we stop at the just as I am without one plea. As if there's nothing else that's left for me. So he's going to take me just as I am. And we have preachers that preach it. You don't, you don't have to change. Just, just believe Jesus. And can I tell you, some of the evangelical greats are telling me today that they did, they did the, the kingdom of God a disservice. By not discipling people who came to the altar to receive Jesus. But didn't disciple them and prepare them for the life, the new life that they have in Christ. And as we grow in our life in Christ, we're being prepared for the life with Christ. Amen. To be there, amen, forever and ever. You see, Advent is a season whereby we're preparing for Christmas. It's a time to reflect and to rem and remind yourself of the coming of Christ as a child, the baby in the manger. But it's not only about that. If we've, it, I, I, I said this last week. We need to be able to go beyond that. Sometimes we need to look a little bit farther down the road, a little bit farther in time, because that's what Jesus did when Jesus was going to the cross. When Jesus was at the Last Supper, he wasn't just looking at the Last Supper. He wasn't just looking at the cross. He, because he was looking for the joy that was set before him, he was going to endure that cross. Yeah. What was the joy that was set before him? He knew what was going to happen. He knew what would be made manifest and available to, to mankind, to all of creation. And he went through what his father had sent him to do. Yes. Are you with me this morning? So we can't just leave Thanksgiving behind. What happens? We just pack it along saying, Oh, Lord, thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. Can you thank him right now? Can you thank the Lord right now? Can you get somebody get excited about Jesus up in here? Or we're just going to stop and have an altar call right now because there's no spirit in you right now. There's no faith and there's no hope in you. Now, understand, listen, understand this. The Bible teaches us that there are three great things, faith, hope, and love. And, and, and the greatest of these, love. Love. amen. How many of you say you love Jesus? Amen. I'm just here to tell you this morning that once in a while I catch myself and I have to remind myself I need to be thankful for the one whom I love, for the one whom I'm dedicated to. 
Come on now. His name is Jesus. Because, Amen. listen, faith, hope, and love, the greatest of these that remains, faith is appearing of Jesus, gone. Hope, why would you hope for what you already have? Be thankful for it. Amen. How many of you got Jesus? Yeah. Can you be thankful for it? But how many of you have hope, not only in this life, but the life that is to come? Come on, somebody say Merry yeah. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. So not only do we look for the coming of Christ in the manger, but also the soon coming, listen, the soon coming of Jesus Christ in the clouds. We're preparing. We're in preparation right now. We don't just get through Christmas. Well, the might we don't just get through Christmas. Well, that's what most of the church has been doing for decades. We just got to get through this. You know, all this preparation we've got to do. And uh, listen, every Christian in the, in the world spends a lot of time preparing and trying to get through. And, and many of us, uh, I went to my house the other day. Apparently, they hadn't got through. They still got last year's Christmas decorations up. I wonder if they even remember that they're there. Here's the deal. Sometimes we need to look a little bit farther ahead. <coughs> Christmas isn't here yet. The, our traditional day that we celebrate. But it's coming. How many of you got plans? How many, how many got hopes? How many have desires? I mean, there are things that we hope that we, you know, children are raised and, and they're waiting. They're hoping to get something under that Christmas tree. Somebody say amen. 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 I'm still waiting. <laughs> I, I'm, Brother Mike, I'm still a child at heart. <laughs> Let the boy live. <laughs> Can we just worship? Can we just begin to practice what it means? See, if you can't worship in the church house, if you can't worship in your devotion time, how in the world are you going to make it in heaven where you're going to be at an endless opportunity, an endless time of worship? <sighs> Come on now. Tell your flesh, hey, it's time to worship. Let's do this in Jesus' name. Oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see the light above thy deep and dreamless sea, the silent stars so far, yet in thy dark streets shine. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in me tonight. For Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above him, while mortals sleep Just like this one here. 